Okay, this is uh, the fourth section of the moments chapter, and it's to do with centers of mass. Now, all of the questions we've done so far, they talk about a uniform rod or a uniform beam. And when we have questions like that, anywhere where it says that something is uniform, then it just means that uh, we take um, the uh, center of the, the beam or the rod as where the center of mass acts. Okay, so if a beam was 5 meters long, we put the center of mass at 2.5 meters. This section is all about things which are non-uniform, which means that the center of mass isn't at the center, it's off-center. Now, it may be that we're told that it's off-center and we're told where that distance is. It may be that we need to work out where that distance is. So non-uniform uh, means the center of mass does not does not act at the center is off center okay and the reason i've got this fosbury flop up here look it up um, it was a new way of doing uh, the high jump and um, the way it allowed people to uh, jump higher on the high jump because it involved changing the person's center of math. So it's it's quite you know it's worth looking up to see how um, you know something in sports actually the science behind it um, all involves the center of mass and lowering your center of mass as you do the high jump right okay so let's start by drawing this by a with a diagram so we have a pivot in the middle which means we have a a normal reaction there um, and then we have we're told it's a non-uniform plank okay so the mass isn't going to go in the center it's going to go somewhere off center um, and its mass is 25 and the center of mass is at C right so the center of mass is off center here and it's 1.8 meters from the end and the mass is 25 kilograms so 25 g is its weight so we have that um, sam um, has mass 35 tamsin sits at a okay so we have tamsin in this position here right at the end and her mass is also 25 so 25 g here for tamsin and sam is 35 and sam is 35 um, g his weight 35 g um, we don't know how far he is where must he sit for the plank to be horizontal now we could work out his distance from the center of the seesaw we could work out his distance from a or his distance from b um, i'm going to work out his distance from b so i'm going to work out his distance from point B. Now I gave you a tip in the previous, a previous one, which said whichever point you want to measure the distance from, choose that as your pivot point. So I'm going to choose um, point B as my pivot. 
yeah because I want to find a distance from B if I was finding a distance from A I would take A as my pivot point now because I've got two unknowns I have to work out uh, look at the forces and the moments so if I start with the forces I had R going up and that will equal the forces going down which are the 225Gs and the 35G that's nice and easy I will get R equal to 85G I'm going to leave it in G for now I'm not going to change it until the end now I'm going to look at my moments and I'm taking moments from B so I'm looking at the way the direction it's going to pivot round that wants to pivot that way the uh, normal reaction wants to make it pivot around that way this is all, all in relation to point B remember okay so you've got three anti-clockwise pivots down at the bottom and the clock, clockwise pivot at the top so um, let's write down an equation so the anti-clockwise pivots which is going to be x times 35 g or 35 gx uh, plus and then the distance from b to um, the uh, pivot point is going to be oh no we want the we want this one here so since the whole thing is 4 if this distance is 1.8 the distance from b to here is just going to be 4 take away 1.8 so that distance is going to be 2.2 um, .2. so plus 2.2 .2 times by 25g plus the last anti-clockwise one is all the way to the other end so that's going to be 4 times 25g so they're all the anti-clockwise one and the clockwise one is going to be from B to um, the pivot which is at the center so that's 2 2 R and R I've already worked out as 85 G from there so this is just a matter of sort of simplifying working this out so um, 2.2 times 25g is going to be 55g so let's write it like this 35gx um, plus 55g plus 100g equals 170g okay so 35gx equals so let's take 100 away from 170 and we'll take 55 away from that and we're left with 15g so that means x equals 15g over 35g so you see the advantage of not trying to work out what g is because it all cancels out anyway and you can leave your answers in terms of g okay that gives me exactly 3 over 7 so 3 over 7 meters from B that's where the person needs to uh, be for the uh, thing to balance if I change that to a decimal um, that is um, let's put B back now it disappeared uh, 0.42857 so three significant figures uh, 0.429 um, from B as my final answer okay let's have a look at this one here so again non-uniform rods now in this one we need to work out where the center of mass is let's draw a diagram non-uniform rod 
it's three meters long has a weight of 20 it's resting on supports here and here uh, C and D um, this is A at this end uh, this is one meter to there uh, the, uh, the distance from A to D is 2.5 meters so from here to here is 2.5 meters so that means that the bit in a different middle is 1.5 meters so that's just between there and there um, if it's three meters long and I've got one here and I've got 1.5 here that means that this bit at the end is 0 0.5 meters so we've got that and um, look at that uh, what else have we got ah right magnitude of reaction so we've got a reaction here and a reaction here now they are related to each other the magnitude of the reaction at C is three times the reaction at D. So whatever the reaction at D is, the reaction at C is three times that. Okay, make sure you get those the right way around. So we've got that. And then somewhere along the rod, we have its mass, which is 20 newtons. So that can go anywhere we like. and it's um, somewhere off center and we want to work out this distance x so step number one let's look at the forces they're going to be balanced so we've got 3r and r going up equal to 20 newtons going down so we get 4r equals 20 which means that the normal reaction is 5 newtons. Okay, that's done. We're going to need that in the next bit where we take moments. Where should we take moments from? From the point where we want to know the distance from. We want to know the distance from A. So we're going to take moments from point A. About A, we say. Take moments about A. Right. So if I take moments about A, I'm just going to draw a little moments diagram down here so it's nice and clear. Now we've worked out R, so 3R is going to be 15. Then we're going to have this distance of X and 20. And then we're going to have this distance to here and R, which is 5. Let's put down which direction they want to go in. This wants to go in that way, so does this. This wants to go the other way because we're picking this as the pivot point. So um, we're ready to write our equation. So the 15 newtons is a distance of one from a pivot point. So one times 15. What else is going in the same direction? The five newtons which is a distance of 2.5 from the pivot point. So 2.5 times 5 that should equal the anti-clockwise and that's a distance of x what we want to find and a force of 20 newtons right so let's work out what we get on the left hand side and we get 27.5 so 27.5 equals 20x that means that x is going to be 27.5 divided by 20 and that gives us 1.375 and that's uh, three decimal places so 1.375 meters okay that's the distance x so we'd finish that off um, we could give that uh, or three significant figures 1.3 uh, 1.38 so you could say the center of mass center of mass is 1.38 meters from a they wanted the distance from a and by picking that as the point we took 
moments from makes the working easier. Okay, you should now be able to do exercise 4D. Now, exercise 4D starts on page 81 and goes to page 83.